This video is once again sponsored by iNew. They have sent me their latest product, the Pocket Rocket P50. And here it is here. It is incredibly small. For just $29.99, you get a 10,000 milliamp battery packed into a body that weighs only 160 grams. It's really small. It's nearly the same size as AirPods Pro, so it slips into a pocket or bag without adding any bulk. What makes this power bank even more convenient is the built-in USB-C cable, which also doubles as a 60 watt fast charging cable. Despite its size, the Pocket Rocket P50 can output a full 45 watt. That means it'll power an iPhone 16 up to 63% in just 25 minutes, or charge an iPad Pro to more than half in the same time. You can also pick from several colors, ranging from this one, which is the uh, matte black. It looks really sick, but you can also choose different color options, which is really, really awesome. Personally, I really like taking this power bank out on, on hikes or day trips. It's so small and, and light that I hardly notice it in my pocket, but it makes a big difference when my phone battery dips low and I can just quickly pull out this power bank, plug it in and it starts charging. It's super, super convenient. And I don't have to rely on a you know a classic power outlet or, or whatnot. Anyway, if you're interested, check out the links in the description to grab the Pocket Rocket P50. Huge thanks to iNew for sponsoring today's video. Hitman World of Assassination on iPhone and iPad seems to run at a mix of medium and low settings. That makes sense. It's a massive AAA game on mobile hardware so visual compromises are expected. Compared to PC at max graphics, the differences show up in fine detail. Text on signs or clothing isn't as sharp. Reflections on cars or water are softer, and many textures like fabric, stone walls, or pavement look flatter. Foliage also loses some density, with trees and grass not detailed as the PC version. Even so, lighting holds up really well. Shadows in particular look solid, and night scenes still have great atmosphere. Outside of resolution and frame rate, the game offers very limited graphical options to improve visual quality on mobile or to tailor it to your device. Across all devices, you can select 30, 40, or 60 FPS. However, I found that most of my devices remain internally capped at 30 FPS, even when choosing 40 or 60 FPS. But I'll put on screen the devices I have on hand that appear to be capped at 30 FPS right now. The only devices that I have that actually work with 40 FPS or 60 FPS are my M1 iPad Pro and M4 iPad Pro, both with 16 gig of RAM. I'm unsure if higher frame rates require an iPad Pro, 16 gig of RAM, or is this just a, a, a weird bug? I don't know. If it's IO Interactive's intention for certain devices to not support 60 FPS, then why not just remove the FPS options for 40 and 60 if they don't even work? Like, it's just a bit weird. You can choose between Metal Effects Spatial and Metal Effects Temporal. Metal Effects Spatial locks you into performance mode, which appears to use about 50% scaling of your device's native resolution. Metal Effects Temporal gives you more flexibility with performance, 50% of native resolution, balanced, 65%, and quality, 80% scaling. Interestingly, disabling adaptive super sampling defaults the game back to Metal Effects spatial performance. It doesn't actually turn it off. As expected, temporal upscaling generally looks better than spatial upscaling, especially at uh, low resolutions. This is because it accumulates detail and reduces artifacts across multiple frames while spatial 
only processes a single frame, which often makes the image look blockier or less transparent in motion. Just look at the ghosting around Agent 47 as I pan the camera. It's not nearly as noticeable with temporal upscaling. The trade-off, however, is that on pretty much all devices, you really need to use spatial upscaling to keep the performance uh, manageable. Yeah. Lastly, you can adjust mirror reflection quality from off up to high. This setting changes the resolution of reflections in mirrors and on floors. One of the best examples of this tech for me is in Mission on Top of the World. Enabling it here lets you see Agent 47's reflection in the mirrors as well as the hot air balloon in the distance. All right, now let's go over the performance of the game across multiple devices. First, iPhone performance. I'm testing the game on my iPhone 16 Pro Max and my iPhone 15 Pro. It's not the Max model. As I mentioned earlier, the game seems capped at 30 FPS on all iPhones, even if you select 30 or 60 FPS. Honestly, that doesn't really matter because the game struggles to maintain 30 FPS in almost every scene I tested. One of the biggest issues on iPhone and iPad is shader compilation. Unfortunately, Hitman World of Assassination doesn't seem to preload shaders when you launch the game or load into a save. As a result, gameplay can be extremely choppy freeze at times, and audio may cut in and out. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowloon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. Restarting the game can help somewhat, but the problem is still noticeable. Overall, it gives a pretty terrible first impression. To be fair, most people are probably trying the demo of this game, which offers the ICA training facility tutorial and the Sebastian Principle Escalation in Dubai. These missions aren't actually that demanding, so for some, first impressions might be okay, but even still, I am noticing some shader comp here and micro stutters. But, you know, once you get further into the game, shader compilation is just, it's just so bad. <laughs> From my perspective, not preloading shaders is baffling, especially since many modern AAA games do this to smooth out performance. Privacy is a four letter word in this place. It's pretty ironic that a cloak and dagger organization like the ICA keeps its most valuable secrets here. For comparison, on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, Feral Interactive's Grid Legends compiles shaders when you first install the game and launch it. This keeps frame pacing extremely smooth during races, and we see zero shaders compiled in the HUD during races. I know these games are totally different, so it's prudent to mention that I'm just referring to shader comp, not how the games perform between each other. Another problem is the game's use of pipeline states and cached shaders. Pipeline states and case shaders just keeps growing and growing and growing. The numbers get really high. In an ideal situation, they should never keep climbing, especially after like 10 minutes of gameplay. In this game, it can spike up to and, and over 300,000, which is, wow. This is likely a huge part of why the game struggles so much right now. Restarting the game helps temporarily, but the number just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing and you just, you have to keep restarting it to fix it and then it happens again and you restart it, it's just ugh. For comparison, here is another complex open world game on iPhone, Death Stranding. I did a quick test, playing the game for about 20 minutes, I just walked around and then I did a beach things encounter and it maxed out at 
5,742 pipeline shaders and 6,402 cached shaders. They did not increase at all after, uh, like, I don't know, 10 minutes of gameplay. Yes, this game is running at low graphics and 360p with Metal Effects Temporal, but it's able to maintain the 30 FPS target pretty well because it isn't facing these issues and also it doesn't have as bad shader comp because it loads shader comp in the menu. Hitman is also extremely CPU bound. Even though this game is a few years old, the number of NPCs on screen can make it very demanding. In some scenes, FPS drops below 20 and in extreme cases below 10 FPS. This is especially noticeable in the finish line in Hitman 2. The command buffer CPU and render encoder CPU can hit 30 to 50 or so MS, which is far too high. These numbers need to come down to improve performance. Finally, the game uses a great deal of RAM. In most cases, quite a bit over 5 GB. Typically, my iPhones have around 1 gig of available RAM to work with, and in the worst case scenario, down to 500 megabytes and even lower. Thankfully, during my time with the game, it didn't crash on either of the phones, which is actually kind of cool, but the high memory usage is a little concerning, and I strongly believe that you will face crashes if you play this game for very long play sessions. Look, I really don't care if the game is capped at 30 FPS. Modern iPhones still struggle to hit 60 FPS with demanding AAA titles. So 30 FPS is usually a more realistic target that developers opt for. That being said, what I dislike with Hitman on iPhone is how often the frame rate drops to ridiculously low numbers. And I actually think they should not have shipped it here. <laughs> should have just been an iPad exclusive because this is, this is not good. Next, let's take a look at the game on three M series iPads, an M4 iPad Pro with 16 gig of RAM an M1 iPad Pro with 16 gig of RAM, and an M3 iPad Air with 8 gig of RAM. Overall, the game is much more enjoyable on iPad than on iPhone, but it's not without issues. Shader compilation remains a major problem on all of my devices. Even after a fresh restart, the shader count can climb up quite high. I can't stress enough how much a pre-shader compilation would improve performance here. But also, I'm just some random guy on the internet, so I might have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. Once we are past the main shader compilation, frame pacing improves qu quite a bit. My M1 iPad Pro struggles to go over 30 FPS, which for me isn't surprising. You know, most modern AAA titles run at about 30 FPS on M1 iPads and also on M1 Max, so it's it's what I expected. For the smoothest experience on this iPad, I capped it at 30 frames, which gives a nice, consistent frame interval. Some scenes did go below 30 FPS, but it was nowhere near as bad as my iPhones. I would say the game is pretty enjoyable here, actually, and I think you can have a good time after the annoying shader compilation. The M4 iPad Pro, obviously being more powerful than M1 iPad Pro, can actually hit 60 FPS in many scenes, but running the game at 60 frames comes at a cost. To maintain a solid 60 FPS, the GPU needs to stay under or around 16 MS, yet it often spikes up to and over 20 MS. This can cause noticeable frame pacing issues, even with Metal Effects Spatial and Performance Mode. Without the Metal HUD, are you going to notice these stutters and micro stutters or whatever? Maybe, but to my naked eye, they can be obvious in some scenes and others not so much. I don't know. 
I actually recommend a 40 FPS cap here to keep overhead low while still providing a smoother experience than 30 FPS. Now let's take a look at my M3 iPad Air. This one is a bit puzzling. It's internally capped at 30 FPS, even if you select 40 or 60. I don't think this device could actually hit 60 FPS, even if it was uncapped, as the GPU rarely hits 16 MS. But possibly if it worked for 40 FPS, it could do quite well for that. On the plus side, with 8 gig of RAM on this device, the available memory never dropped below 1 gig, which I think is actually really good. One strange quirk I noticed on this uh, iPad Air was in the mission End of an Era in Hitman 3. And this is with the Metal HUD. Uh, if we look at the Metal HUD metrics, they just look to be completely broken. From the naked eye, at least my eye, it looks like the game is pulling off 30 frames here. But the FPS and the HUD is so incredibly low and it's just fluctuating like you wouldn't believe it. I have no idea what's going on here. And I've never noticed this with other games. I just thought I wanted to, I just wanted to point that out. Across all devices, CPU bottlenecks are noticeable in scenes with dense crowds. For example, in the finish line from Hitman 2, even the M4 iPad Pro drops to like 30 or 40 or so FPS, while my other iPads go below 30. Although it goes without saying, the performance hit is not nearly as noticeable as my iPhones. Maybe if you have an M-series iPad, Hitman World of Assassination is worth taking a look at. Just manage your expectations regarding the shader comp, frame rate spikes. Hopefully a future update addresses some of the glaring performance hiccups too, and, and I could recommend this game more on iPad. And guys, that's basically it. Hitman Absolution on mobile. I don't really have much else to say apart from what I've already said. The game needs some serious work done ASAP. It's got huge optimization issues, especially on iPhone. I strongly, unfortunately, I strongly discourage you from even trying it on iPhone because it's just so poorly done. I'm sorry. I really, really, really want this game to do well because I think it it's a, a huge game that could have a huge impact on mobile gaming and its current state is just... Uh, I, Think is a little bit sad in my opinion and i was hoping for it to be better i mean at, at, but on the other side the ipad version is more acceptable you can probably have a okay time there but you're still going to have issues with the frame pacing and the shader comp and so forth but i really want io interactive to to put out a performance update for this game because it it needs it and that's all i have to say see ya